the William Wilberforce Trust. Yeah, I mean, come out of one of the one of my heroes, those social reformers of, of old, like Bernardo and Booth, uh, Wilberforce, Elizabeth Fry, Shaftesbury, all those people. And Wilberforce was, was amazing. 46 years of um, fighting for the abolition of slavery, 11 defeats in Parliament, and such tenacity, and, um, and just, just pushing on to get it through. We called it um, the William Wilberforce Trust. Um, we got the logo together. I mean, it's easy, it's William Wilberforce. Um, but a, a friend of mine who put this together, um, a graphic designer, put the logo together then, um, and then gave me a call and said, Paul, you should come and see what we've found. I said, what? Went to see it. And he'd, he'd highlighted this um, I am for you out of it, which is, um, which is extraordinary because you can look at it you know, either way as a Christian, Christ, I am for you, or the charity is I am for you, trying to help you in practical ways homelessness, drug addiction, housing, all those sort of things, just a supportive charity. Now, this is, the charity is based in this church of St Augustine's. It is. Which is one of the most beautiful churches in London, but was very neglected until it was offered to Holy Trinity Brompton and Nicky Gumbel. And Nicky Gumbel brought you in as the pastor and now priest. And isn't it the case that you have never before conducted an Anglo-Catholic liturgy? And that now you, this is the only HTB plant which still uses the Anglo-Catholic traditional service. It is, to my knowledge, it, it is. And uh, you're absolutely right, Ruth. Never done that in my life before. I went from 40 years an atheist to do an alpha course, um, to, to get involved with HTB as a pastor that worked in prisons, to four years ago, I'm still laughing, four years ago, Nikki saying, would you, um, would you look after this site and, and learn this stuff? Which has been... Um, it's been amazing for me, really, in my development as a, as a Christian, to, to be involved in that type of liturgy and a different type of churchmanship. The charity, the William Wilberforce Trust, really has three main um, main arrows of what we try and do. It's uh, rescue, restore, and reintegrate. We rescue people caught in crisis. Uh, we restore them through the courses and the partnerships and, and the fellowship and the church that we have in the communities, and then we reintegrate them back into society, and hopefully they can lead a good and proper life. So in those three uh, areas, rescue, restore and reintegrate, we do um, homelessness. We, in this church, as you said, three days a week, we have over 350 people coming through on a Wednesday, Friday and a Saturday. We have a, a night shelter through the winter months uh, where we they sleep here on the carpets. We run a, a money course for, for budgeting, uh, for being able to make ends meet with money, uh, instruction in that. We run a debt centre. Uh, for serious debt, people being evicted or going to prison, we help them with that. We run a recovery course which deals with alcohol and uh, all types of addictions. We run a dealing with depression course to help people suffering with depression. And, uh, and, and a few other things that we do, we do counselling. We've got 46 counsellors here uh, who are pro bono that help us in all those different areas. A prison ministry. Uh, inside the prisons and then aftercare, care and offenders uh, when they come out and try and help them. So all that social needs uh, and my passion is social reform comes under the William Wilberforce Trust. Isn't it the case that just 13 fairly elderly people came every week and there was no resident priest? There was no resident priest. Um, there were 13 very loyal um, parishioners who came here faithfully every Sunday with various priests coming in and, and doing what they did and helping them. And, and now it's, um, it's been transformed, really. Uh, they've been amazing. And keeping the same style of liturgy and service, apart from the fact that you face the congregation instead of celebrating facing... The only thing we changed was, 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 was me, really, my preference. I didn't want to do um, the, the communion, the mass, whatever you want to call it, at the, at the high altar, so the normal high Anglican church service would be with the priest um, with his back facing the congregation. That's just not my nature. So we moved it from there and we brought it to the table here where we do communion and, uh, and everyone's engaged and just my own preference is, is to be involved with the community. So, and we took the pews out uh, and the reason for that, as you said, is that we have you know, the homeless in here, we run courses in here, we do the debt counselling here. Uh, and we started a service uh, in the in the evening as well, 4:30 service. So the whole place now is um, 
is alive and it's buzzing. It's just so exciting. It is really extraordinary. It's, uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. This is happening in the middle of London. and In the middle of London. And it was a church that was, um, for whatever reasons, it, it was dying. It, it was dying and not used. The roof was leaking. The no lights. roof was leaking. The power supply was dying. The lights weren't working. Uh, the toilets were falling apart. It was just in a state of disarray. And the vestments, Paul, have you come to grips with the... The vestments. <laughs> so w when we came here, um, when we got given the church, or Nicky Gumbel, my boss, got given the church, we opened these drawers and found all these amazing vestments which go and coincide with the calendar year of the church. And um, I, for one, didn't have a clue what they were for, and they were all in a mess. So we got some help from the, um, from the oratory. And my new friend, Father Rupert, came over and, uh, and we had a great time. We got everything out on the floor and he put them all in the right sets. You know, what goes with what, what's Italian, what's French, um, what's um, from Rome, what goes with what. And uh, he's put them all in order for us. And didn't that, didn't that lead also to the oratory now becoming a place for offenders? That led to uh, a relationship. Um, there's two very different priests. And then um, Father Rupert got in, interested in what we do, especially with the aftercare, the care and effects offenders, training churches up to, to help receive men and women when they come out of prison. And, um, and from those conversations, the oratory is now signed up to care and effects offenders and is a church that uh, is trained up and is waiting for an ex-offender to take them on board, which, again, is just extraordinary. We want a partnership in, in different churchmanship and just that the churches can work together and, and do this. It's been a steep learning curve, but like I said, it's, been, um, it's really helped my faith, actually, to, to look at different types of churchmanship and not, not be frightened of it, to, to get involved in it and embrace it. So I could be here in robes in, in, the, in the morning and in the evening I could be in a shirt and a pair of jeans. And I still keep thinking it's a bit of a sort of April Fool's joke on me or something and I'm going to take it back. It's, uh, it's really been quite overwhelming, and just the, the, that's the kindness of people, it's been great. But what does it mean to me seriously? I think it means that a recognition of the work we've been trying to do, working with ex-offenders and, and in the community with all the stuff through the William Wilberforce Trust. And if it, will, um, if it will help raise that profile, give us a platform to speak more and encourage people to get involved, especially the church, then, then it will be well worth it.